this is Fiona. She's a trained printmaker, illustrator and homewares designer. She works from her well-equipped home studio in Cornwall with her photographer husband Tom and their two children, Edith and Archie. She is an avid bird watcher and loves spending time outside in the garden watching for the latest birds to arrive. She loves to bake cakes, go for nature rambles, do a spot of gardening, as well as spend time with her kids. She sells under her brand, Particle Press. Today I get to talk to her about developing a body of work, putting on workshops, selling wholesale, and the importance of setting yourself a deadline. This is episode two. Welcome to Creative Conversations. Yeah, welcome Fiona. Thank you, thanks for coming. Um, let's start with you then. Um, where are you from? I'm from a little place called Lossiemouth, which is on the northeast coast of Scotland in between Inverness and Aberdeen. Um, and all my family is still there and lots of friends and family and I miss it. Um, but I went to study um, printmaking at Grace School of Art in Aberdeen and then I went on to do a master's at the Royal College which was straight after graduation from Grace School of Art so I kind of did seven years, seven years, six years of study um, and then I met Tom who's now my husband and we, yeah, we stayed in London for eight years yeah. yeah. So so we kind of Tom, where is he from? He's from well, he was born in London but he's from Cornwall, so that's why we've yeah. ended up down in this little pocket of the world. <laughs> so you moved down in was it 2012? two thousand and twelve? Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. two thousand twelve. Um so we were in London for eight years and we were both kind of working and doing our thing and then we got married and decided that we wanted to have kids and we were gonna you know try and make it work in London but it just seemed like it wasn't really the place that I wanted to be to to bring up kids and also to be able to kind of have that balance of being creative and having kids in London just really scared me and I wanted it to be near family so we'd, it was either Scotland or Cornwall and we came down here to give it a bit of a shot and I did a craft fair actually for the first time with my staff because I just started making things that was quite different from the artwork that I used to make before. Yeah. Um, as a kind of way to try and make some money, I guess, that I thought, you know, I could kind of try and use my screen print skills to try and kind of do a little bit of a business alongside being a mum. And then um, did a craft fair while we were still up in London. We were coming down here for Christmas, so I booked it as a Jubilee Wharf. Yeah. I think, did I meet you there I then? Think I think so, actually. Um, yeah. And it was really, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. And I, and I kind of but I felt like a bit of a fraud or we're you know we're yeah. we're not from down here and then I thought I really enjoyed it. it was really people were really friendly and kind of made me feel really welcome and I thought yeah I should give Cornwall a bit of a go <laughs> so we ended up moving down and we didn't know how long we'd stay for but yeah still yeah. here okay. <laughs> so um, just in case people don't know what you do what is it that you create I uh, a bit of a kind of started out mainly screen printing so screen yeah. printed screen printing, yeah. kind of homewares um, and gifts I guess so they kind of started out mainly as lap shades and cushions which I screen printed and then just as kind of probably less than a year ago it's kind of changed direction quite quite dramatically and now it's um, mainly sort of hand painted um, images which I turn into patterns but yeah. I'm, I still love my screen printing and yeah. I kind of really still want to that to be a big part of what I do but um, at the moment with having two wee ones this seemed quite a nice way of still being able to sort of make work without having 
to be in hair printing all hours, yeah. which I can't really do. No. <laughs> So what kind of things do you do with your business? Because you obviously, you make um, lampshades and you do homewares, like cushions, um, aprons. Yeah. But you, also, what else do you do? You So you sell stuff, but you also run workshops? Yeah, so first of all, I run a print club, which is every month, usually the first Saturday of the month, where people can come and print. So if you've got some printing experience, you can come along and I can just sort of help you do whatever you want to do. And then I run workshops, um, so introduction into printing onto fabric using paper stencils, which is a really basic technique, but it's yeah. one of the ones that you can actually leave knowing how to do the process and, and set it up from your kitchen table if you want to. You don't really need that much equipment, which is a really nice thing, I think, to give that little nugget of inspiration and information to somebody that then they can take away yeah. and actually do, which is, is really important. Um, so that's really popular as a kind of basic introduction and then I also do a photo screen print where you can actually expose images onto a screen and and print onto fabric or yeah. paper and that's the way that I mainly make my work. Yeah. Through the... I was going to say um, we're actually in your home studio now yeah. and um, like Fiona's got everything set up here over there is the um, kind of bed where yeah. you would burn your screens yeah. and she's got a print rack over here um, your squeegees, you've got all your inks. Yeah, um, an array of colours. And a <laughs> massive table as well. Yeah, um, which is important, which is nice to sit around and everybody, when we, we do the workshops we sit around and we make the artwork and chat yeah. and eat cake and drink tea and I also use it when, um, you know, clear it for cutting my rolls of fabric, I can cut yeah. down things and have a nice big space to work, which is quite important. I think yeah, that is, isn't it? It's really important room. to have your space where yeah. you can kind of bring everything out yeah. and it's um, nice to be able to, to kind of leave things as it was and come back to it as well because I think to think oh you've got to pack it all away and then oh, to get it all out again and it just seems like it's more of a chore in some yeah. way. so it's kind of nice that you can you've got all your stuff here and yeah space is brilliant but I did have somebody say the other day to me which I thought was quite interesting is that you can actually make it work in a really small space you know, you can. Yeah. If you really want it to, then yeah. you know you can, and it doesn't really matter what space you have. If you've got the passion and inspiration, then you can. Yeah, you can you do can it from do wherever, it. Yeah. which is. Yeah. yeah. Say at the end that I offer tea every <laughs> half an hour, <laughs> <laughs> just because I really I drink tea a lot. Let's so, talk about yeah. Tea. Yeah, tea. What kind of tea <laughs> do you? <have? laughs> <laughs> Love a Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire I should say tea. Scottish blend or something else, shouldn't I? Like, yeah. But um, no, Yorkshire tea is my tea. Okay, it's your my, go-to tea. It's my go-to tea. Um, maybe a bit of a peppermint tea every now and again. Yeah. So I do. I do have quite a lot of fruit teas and things. But yeah, I'm a proper tea tea. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> tea is always good. Loads of milk. <laughs> I want to talk to you about you know your inspiration for your products where do you get the inspiration mm -hmm. from and yeah what inspires you um well as you'll probably see from right about here we literally live in the middle of nowhere so it's um there's so much wildlife and um flowers and that, and I love all the changing seasons how it can go completely bare to just being the most amazing array of mm. colour and I think Cornwall is just a really colourful place like really surprised when I first moved down when you drive along and all the hedgerows I've got are really colourful and yeah rather than just kind of green it's yeah there's lots of things that grow um and um, yeah, in, the, in our garden we have I have lots of bird feeders, so I have loads of birds come and I really yeah. love bird watching, proper bird geek. Um, and so, yeah, and I like getting the kids into that as well. So now they know all the kind of main birds that come to the garden, so I'm like, yes, I've made some <laughs> little twitchers. Um, down at the bottom of here, there's, a, there's an old man that lives down here and he's got this amazing, like, almost National Trust garden and it's just the most beautiful place to go mm. and so yeah just surrounded by so much um but my dad I grew up in a similar place to this so kind of in the middle of nowhere um and my grandpa and great grandpa both worked for forestry commission have always kind of lived in the kind of sticks as mm. such so yeah I think it's been passed down from yeah, yeah we used to spend long days at my granny's um in Mistorlich which is a little place just um along from Lost at Mouth about six or seven miles um, but inland not on yeah. the coast and yeah 
we used to spend hours and hours just playing outside and I think as a childhood of being outdoors and yeah. being you know just in amongst wildlife and learning about things and yeah I think it's just fed through yeah gone from, through into your work yeah actually um you took part in the what's it 100 day, 100 challenge, day challenge yeah which on instagram, on instagram. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why i did that <laughs> but, um i think it was a it was a turning point for you yeah absolutely you've... yeah it was really um i tom bought me some or i should say the kids bought me some paint for mother's day which was just before it started and i started painting it which i hadn't painted since i used to do that as a like a teenager I used to make, you know, did paintings of things and gave them to people. And then if, when I went into the whole printmaking thing, I never really went back into, because you don't really paint in order to make prints. It was much more um, illustrative stuff. So I kind of left it behind and then I, Tom bought me these paints and I thought I'll start painting again. And like I said, it was just before the, the ch I saw somebody had said that they were taking part on Instagram and I thought, oh, I could do that because I'd done a couple and then I'd put them up on Instagram and had quite good feedback. So I thought, oh, I'll just give it a give it a go and then once I started it I thought 100 days quite a long time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so every night and at the time Tom was working towards a solo exhibition in London with mm. his work and um, I was looking after the kids every day so I, I'd never had any day time um, and so it was just all night time so every night I used to get the kids to bed, get the paints out and sit at the kitchen table and do painting. So it was literally every day for 100 days and then I'd post it the next morning, the one that I'd done the night before. So trying to take a picture with the kids, hands in, and I'm like, I just need to take this picture for Instagram. Um, and yeah, it was really, it was, yeah, it was brilliant actually. And, and I think I, I kind of got to a stage, I thought, I just don't know if I can keep this up because it's really tired. Yeah. And, um, but actually I'm quite stubborn. So yeah. <laughs> and did you find like um you know when you commit to something like that on Instagram it's very like public it is yeah you um, feel like you, can't, you almost feel like yeah, accountable can't, don't you and if you don't stop. don't post then people are going to be like where is she where yeah, can I would see people are the camps like the works on like, oh I'm really enjoying your talent and I'm like oh really you're like you know I've got to keep it up now because people yeah. I'm kind of feeling like they're you're they're obliged. waiting to see yeah. my next one but I think in a sense that was good though for you because yeah, it was. Because yeah. it kind of put that deadline on you yeah, in a sense. Yeah, it definitely did. And then I had all these paintings at the end of it, 100, that I was like, I didn't really have an idea of what I was going to do with them. Mm. And I think in some ways that was quite nice because if you set out to do something and, you know, you've got, I've got to make this for this, and actually it puts pressure on yeah. you. Yeah, it takes the joy out yeah. of it as well. Whereas if you start something... I wasn't making yeah. it for anything exactly. in particular. So. But if you start it and you're like, I really like you know, birds, yeah. I really want to paint them, yeah. you've got so much more enjoyment out of it, you've got that passion that, you know, at the start, yeah. rather than thinking, oh, I've got to <laughs> make this, yeah. I've got to do this, it's a lot yeah. harder then, isn't it, it is. to keep it going. And yeah, it definitely is, and then you're like, oh, it's not really what I want it to yeah. be, but, but when it's not really anything, anything it doesn't, yeah. you know, it doesn't really matter. So from that, yeah, you had all of these bird paintings and some Flat, you know, flowers, yeah, so they were kind of, well. but they were mainly off stuff around here, so yeah. I kind of tried to keep it like British, you know, it wasn't, yeah. um, it was all stuff that I'd find, or a lot of the birds, well, most of the birds were birds that we'd seen down here or around about, so it was yeah. kind of, it was really, you know, specifically for for here, which yeah. was kind of quite a nice project as well. So what too. was the first thing you did with your images? Um, well, I didn't really know what to do with them, and um, I scanned some of them in and started playing around with them and in Photoshop, and I wasn't really, the, um, yeah, I'm not that tech tech savvy, whereas Tom is, so he was like, oh, you could do this, and it was kind of quite, it was nice to have um, just a little bit of an insight into what you could do with them kind of post you know, production so yeah it was nice to kind of think oh I could start making fabric or you know I could make them into cards or yeah. um yeah so it was a little bit of everything really. I kind of started making patterns to start with and then um got some fabric samples printed up and I was quite surprised at how well the painted um marks came through in the yeah. fabric I thought it would be really flat and I thought yeah. that I would probably dismiss it because it wasn't you know what I wanted it to look like but actually I'm really surprised at how well yeah. the digital fabric has came came out and it's really accurate to the, the paint and stuff so but so. now like I would say how much of your kind of new work is actually 
used those images. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, all, all, of, it. all of the so, new stuff. All of the new stuff is. Um, it's amazing, actually, how you actually just committed yourself to that 100 days, um, made and painted, and have got all of this new work, and then were able to then apply it to products. To different things, And yeah. all sorts of products. And now I would, you would say that that's kind of like the yeah. main business yeah, that, definitely. You, that you do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, and it's been really quick as well. It's yeah, kind of... because we were saying that when was the 100 day project, it's... It um, starts on the 4th of April, if anybody wants to do it. <laughs> 4th of April, and um, we're not I even really a year. I highly recommend it, actually. <laughs> Although it's quite hard work. Yeah. But this time, actually, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And I... I'm going to plan it more because yeah. I want to. I want. I kind of know what I want to use it for this time. So I'm. Go, I've yeah. I've got a little. You've got an idea. I've got a little schedule <laughs> okay. which I'm going to try and keep to. So make sure you <laughs> follow Fiona on Instagram, and we'll put all of the handles and links down below so that you can follow along. <laughs> and hopefully, guys, you can take part as well. Yeah. We'd love to see what you do. Um. So the next thing um, I want to talk about is wholesale yep um, yeah again that's a that's a new <laughs> thing that i've just um um with the screen the screen printed stuff and the stuff that i used to make so yeah. previous to the new kind of painted stuff was um i did a little bit of sale return a little bit of wholesale mainly with sale return shops down here because they were local and yeah. you know you could kind of keep an eye on things but um going into wholesale yeah it's completely different so yeah. um yeah it's um I was selected with um, the Cornwall Chamber of Commerce and Export for Growth programme to, to go up to London to do the trade fair top drawer at Kensington Olympia yeah. um, at the start of the year. So that was an amazing little um, platform to kind of push me forward. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and that's such a massive and big jump, you know, if you, if you know what it's like to go to a craft fair, a local craft fair, well, this is like... I don't know, ten yeah. times as big as that. <laughs> so different. Yeah, so um, different. What, what, how did you prepare for that? How did you, you know, make yourself ready for um, that? Well, uh, I, I kind of, I saw it and I thought, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this, to, to, to do something like Top Drawer. Although I'd always wanted to do it. Um, and I thought, I'll just apply because it was such an amazing opportunity. And, and to be doing it with other people, there was 15 of us in the end. But it kind of felt like... I'll just give it a go yeah. and then I applied and got selected and then I was like oh I literally had about four weeks to to do what I probably would have would have taken me a year so get a wholesale catalogue together um get a stand get just publicity done and just everything which you know that I it would have taken me forever yeah. you know I wouldn't have had, without that deadline I wouldn't have done those things yeah. um so yeah it was really nice to be able to get um it was really hard work. So it was over Christmas as well. So it was, it was at that time where it was you want to you do lots of craft tours at Christmas yeah. time and you were really knackered after having yeah. such a busy time and then you think oh, you want to stop and have a break but I couldn't. No. Um, so I had to keep and also lots of things were closed over Christmas and New Year. So it was a bit like trying to get um, like your business catalog, cards yeah. and catalogues and postcards and all those things done and a couple of new products that I wanted to do because I wanted to try and get some cards printed and do a little card range. Um, so getting all those things done was quite hard work at that time of year. So again, in advance, <laughs> it would be good to you know be prepared for those types of things. But actually, it was uh, yeah, I managed to get it all done in the end. <laughs> That is true, you know, if you set yourself a deadline, um, yeah. it does push you and it's amazing actually what you can do, things that you may not expect expected Done, yourself yeah. to actually do, yeah. you actually do accomplish and yeah, it's... it's That's really a bit good. like going back to the 100 day challenge as well because that challenge you kind of, it's been set and you think, you know, yeah, well I've got to do it now and it's it's more like a personal goal really to and yeah but yeah just having having that deadline or having something to get something done is just yeah it pushes you to do it yeah. and I think that's what you need yeah as a self-employed person it's really hard to um yeah know wh where to go with what you know and it's it's choosing what you spend your time on mm. but being pushed into something is yeah that's good yeah that's really good what <gasps> advice would you have for your younger self um, oh, I don't know. I think probably um, 
use my time really wisely because now that I've had children it's, I, can't, I just don't know what I used to do for those days when I was self-employed and I was especially before the kids came along I think I used to I don't know what I did I probably actually printed a lot more screen printed a lot more but yeah make the use of your time because the time that you have once you have children is yeah very limited <laughs> Um, one thing that I think is quite a good little piece of advice that I was given is not to compare yourself to other people mm. which um, and I think now especially with Instagram mm. and Facebook and Pinterest and all these things it's so visual and you're kind of bombarded by information by you know lots of other people doing their thing and in some ways it's really inspiring and in some ways it's like oh but you know they're much better at that than me so what why am I doing it kind of thing yeah. um but yeah, so yeah, just don't compare yourself to other people and just do do your thing and you know, do um what makes you happy and work really hard. Yeah. Um because somebody, you know, they might be kind of halfway through their life running their business and you're just at the start and you're comparing them to that, you know, that it's not really it doesn't equate. So yeah, just do your do your thing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. top tip then. <laughs> Compare them yeah. to other people on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Don't compare yourself to other people and do your own thing. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank for, you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, letting us film and um, guys, don't forget to check out Fiona's work on Instagram or website. I'll leave the links below. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And if you have any questions or comments, again, just pop them down below. And we'll see you again soon, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Remember guys to keep creating, keep making, keep having fun. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends. It's banana and pineapple. Oh wow. I don't think I've ever heard of a banana and pineapple one. Banana solution. Oh my goodness, look at that. Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> <laughs>